The Twisted Hobbies 32-inch Edge 540 is made up of all flat pieces, so it comes in a nice small box. It's made from EPP foam, which is kind of hard to damage when you run into the ground, so it lives in a box real well. I like that all of the parts come all die cut, and they're pretty much ready to go. I also ordered the standard power system. They have a couple of different levels of these systems, but they all come pretty much complete, and you get everything you need to get the plane going, except for a receiver. All of the components, like this ESC, are very small and light. You get one prop with the power system, but make sure you buy more, because they will break eventually. And you get a little motor that actually has plenty of power for this airplane. And here's the specs on that motor. The servos are tiny, but you get two that are strong enough for the elevator and rudder, and one that's good for the ailerons. And this is the receiver that's compatible with my Spectrum radios. And here's the extra props that I ordered. Twisted Hobbies was pushing this new glue for these planes, so I decided to get that and found out that it's not a whole lot different from the welders that everybody has been using. When I start flying, we can see if this glue turns out to be stronger or ages better. I also bought a few of these 2-cell 450 milliamp batteries that are designed for this plane. I've been getting solid 5-minute flights with these without really pushing the batteries. The hinges on these planes are molded right into the material. And right out of the box they feel pretty stiff because they are pretty stiff. Those who read the instructions will find out that they want you to fold the stuff over on itself and then weight it down for a couple hours anyway. Folding the surfaces over and weighting them down for an hour or two goes a long way towards loosening them up. These are tiny servos on this plane because everything's meant to be light. If you don't prep the services like they say in the instructions, you can put a big load on the servos. Plus when you do this, the plane flies a lot better right out of the box because the servos can return to center. One of the first, and maybe the sloppiest assembly we have to do is insert the spruce spar into the main wing. I gave up trying to be neat when I do this part of the assembly. I use plenty of glue on all of the services, squeeze it together, and then wipe up what squeezes out. Nothing fancy, but the spar stays where I put it. After squeezing the slot for the spar together, I put some weights on it to hold it shut. The spar in the foam airplane is really important, so we want to make sure we get this right. I also use the weights when I'm gluing together the major parts of the airframe. Here I've just added the nose and tail section to the wing. I always build on a nice flat board so I don't build any twists into these airplanes. When putting the top of the fuse on, you may have to do a little bit of trimming around the spar and around the servos. We just want to make sure we've got a good fit here and that everything seats well. After applying glue to the joint, I assemble it and then use a little square to make sure that we get the upper fuse square to the wing. Sometimes a hunk of tape is needed to make sure that these parts stay square to each other while the glue dries. Once I'm satisfied that I have the piece of square, I leave these things alone for an hour or two just to let the glue set up. Sometimes when you're working alone on these planes, you got to be a little creative and figuring out how to hold them so you can put some of the pieces on. This is what I came up with for putting the rudder on. When installing the rudder, I noticed that some of the edges didn't match up between the rudder mount and the fuselage. They were close, but not exact, and I decided that I wanted to err on the side of function. I decided to make sure that I had a nice consistent gap where the rudder extends over the vertical fin. Installing this motor mount plane is a critical part of this construction, but it's fairly easy. First I scuffed up the bottom of the fiberglass piece to make sure the glue can get a hold of it. Then we make sure there's plenty of glue on the foam and on the fiberglass piece. Then I press the mount into the bed of glue to make sure all of it gets covered very well. I'm told it's a good idea to pull the mount back off, let the glue get some air to it, and then set it back down. After this glue sets up, I'll come back and put some Durabond tape over that with more glue, just to reinforce it a little bit more. One of the ways we reinforce the hinge section of the foam is to put some of that Durabond tape down here. We just lay down a bed of the glue, and then cut a piece of the Durabond tape, and press that into the glue. There's nothing fancy about doing this, but it sure seems to help in preserving the hinges at the ends. There's two 45 degree gussets that go in along the bottom of the plane, and they go a long way to making this thing more rigid. 
Just put glue down the sides, let it set up a little bit and press it in place and let it dry. One of the things I like about the newer Twisted Hobbies planes is that they use plastic control horns and guides. They used to have some super light wooden versions, but those just broke too easy. The super light carbon push rods work because of these plastic guides that we glue in along the way, so this can't bend or bowl. When the controls are all set, I add a bead of glue around the servos to hold them in place. The radio gear just gets stuck to the underside of the body. This stuff is very light, but you can move it around a little bit to help get the CG right. I never put wheels on planes like this because it's just easier to toss them into the air and then land them in the grass. The EPP foam really is tough and the plane is going so slow that you're not going to do any damage unless you really dork this thing in. Because these planes are so light and go so slow, you can practice a lot of stuff right down on the ground where you can see what's going on without worrying about dinging the plane up. The only thing you need to do is when you see it's going to go in and just pull the throttle back and let it go. In the days that I've been flying this edge, I've darked it in the ground a whole bunch of times and I haven't had to fix anything yet. It's even got the same prop on it that it started with. Most of the time you just go pick it up, make sure that the prop's still on square to the motor, and then toss it back in the air and fly it some more. I've got the timer set to 5 minutes on this plane and I use every bit of it almost every flight. The 450 milliamp batteries that are used usually have about 30% left at the end of the flight. One of the things I like to do when it's not too windy is to practice hovering with this little plane. I know it doesn't fly like my big 3D planes, but it does answer the controls exactly the same way. All of the correction inputs are exactly as they are with the bigger plane, so you don't have to worry about damage with this one. And when the timer goes off that the battery's done, just plop it down and go put another battery in it. The Twisted Hobby's 32-inch Edge 540 is a nice little plane for goofing around in the backyard or keeping your thumbs educated. There's lots of times that we can't get out to the big flying field, and this makes a nice flying field out of your backyard. This is a great way to practice just about everything in RC flying except repairing airplanes. And in the winter months, you got a nice warm hangar right behind you to go in between flights. <laughs>